co-creators Convergence Day as part of World Nudity Day. We are so excited to have uh, Kathy Mason here, our co-host, a co-creator, bar none, and she has brought a fabulous guest. I've listened to his podcasts and uh, um, always find what he has to say of interest. And so, Kathy, I'm going to turn it over to you. And Todd, thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Oh. So we originally were going to have Todd and Morgan, but I'm happy either way. I, I love what these guys are doing, and I can't wait to share it with all of you. So welcome to the uh, World Co-Creator Co-Creators Convergence Day, which, as we said, is part of um, uh, World Unity Week which is a, or a group of organizations. There's over 200 organizations that have band together to make something quite extraordinary. The energy is quite extraordinary. And Todd has been doing something just like this, where he has been interviewing, I don't know how many interviews you've done, but interviewing people that have had remarkable, ascension experiences and are part of the lead, cut, lead cutting edge of this change that we're going through. So Todd, let, let's see, how, how do you want to share? I mean, do you want to share how many shows you've done or? Uh, you mean like an intro? Yeah. Uh, well, we've done, uh, Sology was uh, started in the physical nine years ago. Wow. Um, it was started in the non-physical 60 years ago. And there's a story behind that. Um, and uh, we've done, uh, I don't know the exact number, a little over uh, 4,000, 4,500 total video productions, but about 2,000 uh, of those have been our main show, which is called Soul Speaks 5D. It's a conscious conversation. Uh, it's not really a Q and A, you know, it's more of a conversation. And um, yeah, it's uh, a lot of people uh, come on to the show that have not been on before, that have not been in front of a camera before. Uh, it's, you know, that, that's been quite an experience to watch these people come out. Many of them are women, because we know that women uh, are, have been leading the way in this Ascension movement uh, for the last few years since its conception, whenever that was. Um, but yeah, so we, we just try to capture real-time intel. Uh, you know, we capture it through sharing the experiences and their uh, particular gifts and specifics in terms of what their roles are, mission, purpose. And uh, we just try to share that. And we get a lot of comments uh, from people in regard to, um, you know, they don't feel like they're crazy anymore. Uh, I'm not the only one. And yeah. so it's nice to see that too. It's, but uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been uh, very rewarding. It's been tough at times, um, you know, financially, but uh you know, as we're all finding out, we get what we need uh, when we need it, <laughs> not any sooner, and sometimes <laughs> a little later. But um, uh, but yeah, so it's been nice. So we've got about eighty thousand active members. I say members, but um, active, like officially signed up on a page or whatever uh, every week. And uh, I don't know what our reach is. I know our reach was about half a million a month uh, two years ago those metrics got taken away so i really don't know what it is but i would guess it's probably three to four times that amount yep. uh yeah. but it's you know that's just that that is a a figure that they use in the industry for how often do you come up in front of somebody on their feed or on their youtube or whatever and we usually convert somewhere from about 20 to 25 percent so you know it's it's a it's unfolding and we're going to find out uh, sooner or later when we develop uh, and launch our own network and our own site uh, exactly what those numbers are but we're enjoying it yeah well th the thing that i love about what you do i recognize what you're doing right away as part of this big change that we're going through because you're you're giving voice to people that have no voice um or, and have no concept of how to create a platform mm -hmm. and you're talking about some of the hard subjects you're talking about the shift from um well to the divine masculine and the integration of the divine feminine and the divine masculine together you're talking about um 
how people can get real and not have to hide anymore. I mean, these are such valuable conversations. And, and I think that's, that's why I just love it. I don't always get to watch all of yours because a lot of times you're on during work. I'm supposed to be working. I see mm. you're going on. <laughs> <laughs> but so what do you think is the biggest um, contribution that Soology has made? I, that was from my perspective. Would mm. you agree? Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, I've never thought about that. Um, I, you know, to me, energetically, we're adding frequencies to a never expanding vibration, which is really just a small mirror of the universal uh, God substance energy uh, collectively, you know, wholly, uh, but also on a micro level, each one of us, um, the, you know, creation seed, the universe, it doesn't stand still. It requires change when we hold on to beliefs or we hold on to a label or we hold on to uh, certain absolutes that we, uh, you know, won't let go of. Uh, then we find out, especially in these uh, energies that we've had in 2020 and, and, and in the month of June, we find that uh, we get prodded. We're not uh, we're not going to be comfortable if we are going to, you know, if we're going to throw down absolutes with the universe, if we're going to hold on to certain belief systems, if we're not going to be open to uh, what we may not see within ourselves. Um, so, you know, I think for me, if, you know, just kind of reflecting on that question that you asked, um, I think probably the, the best thing is the, the raw, honest truth. Uh, you know, no, no punches being pulled, nothing being held back. Now, do we always get there? No, not necessarily. But the more open we can be, I'm convinced that uh, our highest activations, channelings, downloads, uh, transmissions come from having conversations between two divine human beings or more and, uh, and just laying it on the table. And I, I really believe that it lights people up. The souls get lit up, illuminated. And even if the human gets triggered uh, uh, or is unconscious of the soul activation, it still occurs because the soul sees everything. Well, how did you learn to trust like this? That, I mean, it, it's remarkable, your trust. It, it's, it's, um, it's something to model. How did you learn how to do that? Well, I went through, on a personal level, um, <clears throat> I went through uh, what everybody did. You know, I went through, you know, some people that come on the show talk about they had a serious car accident or they had, you know, one uh, serious uh, life-threatening or whatever type of trauma. Many of the people that come on had a successive number of traumas occur within a short period of time. And um, as we led up to 2012, and so that's what happened to me. Um, you know, I'm married to a shadow eater, uh, energy practitioner that specializes. One of the specialties she does is called zero pointing and which is basically integrating polarities, uh, neutralizing um, the extremes of our experience. Uh, and it's been very, um, beneficial to me but prior to meeting her I walked the streets for two years by my own choice wow. and I think from the moment that that started after after some traumas and there were still some to come <laughs> um, for me that's that's where it started or and maybe that's where I got reawoken or put front and center um, you know I spent every day walking and you know in my own way I was doing things my own way. And, uh, and, and that is the right word. It was trust. I understood that, um, that there was something in me that was bigger than what I thought that I had already always known and felt like many of us, if not all of us. Uh, and I just understood that no, what matter, no matter what had happened in my life, whether it was circumstantial or consequential of my actions, that it was all really the same thing. And, uh, basically in that, uh, in that internal dialogue with the universal or the higher self, I was told early on, uh, you can't lie, you can't make excuses, and you can't blame anything external. So as once I got past that, um, the trust, the faith, I would call the faith, the transitive verb to trust and believe, um, the moving target, not the noun, not the stagnation. Um, I would say that, you know, I eventually met Morgan, and she I was a practitioner, um, like many that I've had on the show, and she kind of drilled down the nuts and bolts of uh, inner work. 
um, zero pointing. And uh, it really went along with what I had done unconsciously with myself, uh, but took it to a greater degree, um, a more intense degree, drilling down to the things that have shaped our perception of ourselves and basically created uh, the layers of lenses that we've all worn. Uh, but in terms of uh, the question, in terms of the trust, uh, I think that uh, you know the only time we don't trust uh, is when we're not on our game. Uh, if we're suspicious, if we let our mind uh, run away uh, with us, you know, our imagination run wild, if we start playing out uh, movie reels in our head of uh, scenarios that might involve other people, and we uh, may have underestimated the power of that programming, which is really self-programming, uh, but I think we're all getting to a point now where we're a little bit more conscious of everything, we're becoming more responsible, and... Uh, and, and we're starting to take ownership of, um, you know, our reality. And, uh, and that takes trust. It takes absolute trust uh, in, in yourself and in the universe, because you can only trust the universe as much as you trust yourself. You can only love the universe as much as you love yourself. And, uh, and that's not a place that is, is literally a journey. And so I think when we talk about the things we talk about in these circles, we're really speaking more of a trajectory than we are, um, in terms of um, you know, a place that we arrive and then we can put our feet up on the desk and, and put our arms back and just take a break. <laughs> no, because consciousness wants to keep expanding and, and it'll keep pushing you to go create something else new, right? That's right. Right. Well, um, so are you optimistic though for humanity or do, or do you not use that kind of uh, terminology? <laughs> Well, uh, absolutely. Um, uh, I mean, it is, you know, I hadn't thought about that word in a while. Uh, I always consider myself to be very positive and optimistic, uh, typically, you know, in a work environment and friend environment. Um, you know, I was typically the rah-rah guy. And um, so, but, in, but I guess, you know, if I look at June 2020, uh, how does that word apply? I don't see any problem whatsoever. Uh, you know, I used to say when I first came out of the blocks at Solji, when I first started in the original studio, bring on the apocalypse, let's see what we're made of. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, we're gods and goddesses in the flesh. Whether we want to accept that or not is going to be, uh, you know, predi uh, whether we accept that or not is the predication of how well we're going to expand and how well we're going to manifest and create consciously. Um, so I think that when I look at the things going around, I look at the things that are going on, which, you know, even if you don't look at the news, you're going to be privy to it. If you go out to a restaurant and you got to put a mask on or whatever, you notice them. But I think uh, one of the things that I've really learned this year, and I think a lot of people are starting to learn, is that if I'm not focusing on myself and if I'm not taking everything into account within myself that I, that I experience, then I'm depleting myself. And I'm basically giving my power away. Uh, so I think that, um, you know, in this time, it's very important to not only be, um, you know, be careful with our actions and with our words, but it's also uh, becoming just as important and just as doable to do that with our thoughts. Uh, we've all come a long way. Uh, we've all probably not given ourselves enough credit or the collective team. Uh, but I think we're at a point now where we've had enough progress in terms of catching ourselves when we project, catching ourselves when we get triggered, catching ourselves when we blame something external or get focused on something as a distraction, that we're starting to bring it back to ourselves center point um, quicker. And, 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 I, and obviously when that occurs and you come out of the chaos and, uh, and, and you pull that back into yourself and you process that, uh, there's a huge elevation and expansion. And I think that's... Uh, probably reflective of the cycle of uh, creation itself, you know, and uh, we're starting to, in this quantum uh, field, we're starting to see some pretty impressive uh, and, and uh, substantial results in people's lives. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I can tell such a difference in you. I've been, I don't know, I've been friends with you for years, it feels like, on Facebook. And I can really tell a difference in how you are being 
and, and in um, in in uh, presence with yourself, and that it it's all okay. Yeah, it is all but, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really cool to watch. It is all okay, you know, uh, and I think. Uh, if I look back at the, the last eight or nine years um, and I look at the different, um, let's just say, collective energies that have presented themselves or energies that have, that have um, permeated into the collective, the human hybrid grid, you know, the earth, yes. uh, you could see different times when, you know, there was a certain masculine adjustment or a feminine adjustment or there was this particular energy or that particular energy was up and Morgan talks about it, other people talk about it. But I really think I, I, I have a little bit of an advantage right now because, uh, you know, like I said, when I reawoke or woke up, or whatever you want to call it, I made a choice and I really didn't understand why it was really my higher self just telling me you got to go do this. And that was just to take a couple of suitcases and my briefcase and just hit the streets, you know, and just figure it out moment by moment, day by day, night by night. Now, what I'm trying to say is, is that uh, everything was taken away by what seemed to be others or by my own choice. And I learned to live in that place without anyone, any, anything. Uh, it wasn't always easy. There was a lot of tears, but we've all had tears. My pain was any different than anyone else's. That's uh, the same proportionate to my life experience. But I think what's happening now, there is more uh, detachment, uh, both by force and by flow occurring around the earth. Uh, liberties seemingly being taken away, freedoms being taken away. And, you know, uh, I'm just not, uh, and I don't know if this is, is good or bad. I'm not trying to, you know, build myself up or anything. I'm just saying what I, I see as a reality. It's not really getting to me because of the lifestyle that I chose to live. And I think that was one of the advantages of taking the hard road early. Um, I, saw, um, I saw a video uh, it was one of those shows like America's Got Talent or whatever. I just saw it a couple of days ago and a gentleman had been wrongly imprisoned for 35 years. Wow. And he not only was a fantastic singer, but he said something in, in his pre song interview that really struck home with me because I've been there, not in his, not to his capacity. Uh, and that's what he said was that, you know, his body was in prison. Um, but his mind was not, uh -huh. and he made it a point. And I think that was one of the things that, that um, I could really relate to because in those first couple of years, um, I had to live in, I didn't have to, but I mean, I, I basically lived most of the time in that, uh, we'll just say the non-physical realms uh, and, and, uh, and I didn't have to do a lot of functioning after, you know, 50 years of having been the breadwinner and, and, and I've taken on all the roles and all that stuff. Uh, there was no strings on me. So I was able to not have to, you know, think too much. You know, I just had to find something to eat, maybe try to do a little work, make a little money, find a place to sleep. And so, um, that helped me a lot, but I really liked what he said because I knew in that period and from that point on, I knew that uh, nobody could take my mind unless yeah. I gave it to him. Yeah, yeah that's like uh, Viktor Frankl, the meaning of, I, I forget the, the title of his book, but he was a, a concentration camp victim. Mm. Yeah. And he wrote a book uh, that same thing, same thing. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a classic. Okay, so, wow, that's, that's, um, I, I don't know if everyone can relate to that, but I think it's pretty cool that you're in the driver's seat. Um, do you feel like we're in a matrix and, and once you, once you got out of the role playing, you could actually play the video game, the hologram? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think that's, we, we have to, especially now we have to be careful with the, the nomenclature, you know, careful with the semantics because people, you know, we're all still going through a lot. There's a there's a some acceleration of the uh, extremity of the polarities, both the non-physical, multi-dimensional, but also the cartoon that's running in the world. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they're all made from the same God substance. Everything is, you know, the same 
thing, every cell, every molecule, every person, every, every event, every energy is actually one and the same. Right. Um, so we, we've kind of got to give it its honor, respect and reverence when we, when we talk about it, because it is a little bit delicate because it's easy for many of us and all of us, me including to get triggered by certain things. Uh, if we hear something and, mis and perceive it in a way, even if it's not intended to be delivered that way. But getting back to what you're saying, uh, I'm a firm believer that um, we all took part in this. We all, uh, every single one of us has had a voice that was a consensus voice uh, in terms of how we um, uh, created and orchestrated uh, this this particular realm. I do think it's a very special place. I do believe that there's millions and millions, if not billions of souls that are lining up to come to the earth for the opportunity uh, that's offered for individual expansion, as well as to serve the collective's expansion. Um, but I believe that we all put this together uh, and, and that we have collectively uh, traversed uh, to this point. Uh, the involvement, uh, the involvement of the human hybrid soul species, uh, and uh, I guess you know that's a really potentially in-depth, comprehensive uh, answer. And the way I would put it is, you know, I know I'm eternal, I know I'm divine. So what the f do I have to worry about? Right, really right. nothing that can be taken away from me. And everything that I know, see, feel, touch, smell, um, hear is is part of me. There's nothing's going to be nothing can be lost uh, because that'd be like trying to you know cut off your arm or something. It just can't happen. Right. So I know Great that sounds talk. a little bit. It sounds a little bit far eastern philosophical. It sounds a little bit cliche-ish, new age-ish, but there is an extreme truth there uh, that has also been in a common thread in really every sacred text and a lot of these oral traditions handed down from primitive religions. Okay, well, let's see if I can even think of something. Else. <laughs> well, we're talking that about whatever fantastic. you want to. Well, when you interviewed me, I got to be on your show once, you asked me something and I kept saying, I don't have words. I, I just do this stuff, I don't have words. And one of the things that I found very valuable about listening to your show is I'm listening to other people have words and then I can sort of piece things together to explain what I feel and know, but I've never spoken. I just do it. So, yes. so when, when I have psychic, um, I, psychic and, and uh, I actually see timelines, um, I don't know how to explain it. I just know that since probably since last October, it's just been wild. Yeah. The stuff, how much more the veils are totally gone if if someone's ready to hear. And all I'm doing is working with their higher self and they're just using me to talk to them, basically. I'm I'm off to the side. So a lot of times I love Zoom because that way at least I can watch it later and find out. What yeah, and see what you did. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't know, but but I remember you saying that, and ever since then it's like, well, maybe I should find some words because I didn't have it. And but but that's one of the values I see in what you do. It's not about um, comparison. No. It's about a reassurance of this yeah. magic that yeah. everyone's capable of uh, experiencing if they if their imagination will allow them to. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good one. <laughs> that was a good, good one. one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, because well, look, I mean, uh, this is one of the things I think that uh, up until that time you're talking about October of last year was about when this started to, to alter significantly to what you're talking about and what I'm leading into here. And, uh, you know, it, it was very common uh, and still is, maybe not as, uh, not as much, it's fading, uh, for people to feel um, superior, to feel inferior, to look at this yogi or this guru, right. uh, to put someone on a pedestal, to say, oh my God, they can do that and I can't. And I think what's starting to happen is as these people who have specific 
um, specific talents and skills, uh, assignments, uh, purposes, whatever yeah. you want to call it, yes, callings. Um, mm -hmm. That's a very powerful thing. It's a very powerful thing for Kathy Mason to start receiving information and be able to see timelines. That's a big challenge to the ego. And what's happening now is we're having uh, quite a few people who have been doing the work for a long time are starting to come to the surface with their gift. And that's another powerful challenge to the ego. And so as these folks who have led the way, uh, and I do not put myself in that category, by the way. Uh, oh, really? You should. No, no. But, but what I'm saying is, as we see the transformation of the individual diving deeper into the waters of humility um, right. and being open about their own, um, you know, their own uh, going Super overboard, power. their own ego, and they start to acknowledge it and love it, just like they do their soul and everything about it, and you see them become human then that energy uh, starts to be um, picked up by other souls. And, and I think we be, we, then we become more transparent because let's face it, telepathy is full transparency. Right. And if we are, if our natural nature is, is 100% telepathic, then we wouldn't be having this conversation with our lips moving and sound coming out of our mouths. But this is really what's happening too, is I think that we're starting to um, pick up on other people's, uh, you know, and it's not really words so much as it feelings and knowings like you're talking about. Right, and, right. Uh, and we may not even have to explain it. We may probably can't explain it, but we can feel it. And, mm -hmm. and that's a little difficult to, um, to, to take on because we're still trying to learn on what's mine and what's theirs. Well, um, I'm not sure it's that difficult. I think it's more, um, if you're embodied that, I think that's the key and, and if you think about the people, a lot of the women healers and, and incredible beings that you've interviewed, a lot of them, I, I think, at least what I've seen, they, their, their process has been to be embodied. They were out of their body, working yes. with their soul, doing whatever assignment, but they weren't fully functioning here. And yes. this soul body fusion that's happening now since October if you so choose, this is where the power is. This mm -hmm. is where the, that's where you can do this kind of unit world unity week with every single type of religion and, and thought process and um, science and industry, every conscious being can play on this game together rather than be in yeah. fear and out of their body. Yeah. No, I think that's a great point. And I think we've seen a lot of people, uh, that's along the lines of what I was just talking about, uh, which I went off on a tangent a little bit because it, it creates a whole different dynamic in terms of the collective experience, relationships and circles of people. It's changing the way business is done. It's changing the way relationships are, are uh, evolved. And uh, it's changing a lot of things. It's changing the way that we function. It's changing the way that we communicate. But yeah, I think that's, that's really what I was uh, another way of uh, putting what I was referring to, and that is, yes, you know, I mean, when I met Morgan, she used to tell me all the time, you know, all this stuff doesn't mean anything until you embody it. And I asked her for two years, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> um, but I learned what it meant. And, and, and I think the only way to uh, actually learn what that means is to experience it. Uh, right. That's that, you know, somebody can tell you something, but you actually have to experience it. That's just the way it works. The universe doesn't allow you any shortcuts. Everybody's got to take every step on the soul highway, you know, yeah. but um, uh, going back to the embodying thing, I think what's happening is you've got like a pendulum going like this, right? And so, you know, where you had over here, I'm way over here in the ethers and the multidimensionality and, and then you start to swing across and what ends up happening is you have created that trajectory going into the human aspects of you, plural, and and then you start to get an avalanche, uh, or I would say a, a rock slide <laughs> or a challenge to your ego because it hasn't been there before. And it'll be fine. And the pendulum will swing back. Uh, and I think everybody uh, on the earth, all 8 billion of us is feeling this. I have often said it, this could very well be a situation where we're all beating at the same vibration, just doesn't look that way from our own perspective. That's uh, and that makes it kind of fun and kind of funny. But yeah, uh, yeah. I do, yeah, I do think that um, uh, what's happening now, particularly now, you know, I had Franco Di Nicola on um, 
this two or three days ago. And his intel, I really like. I really find it valuable. And he was talking about July, August, and the first part of September as he understood it. He's not received anything beyond that because of the importance of it is all about integration. And I said, well, what do you mean by integration? He said everything, physical, mental, emotional, getting used to the way the new languages, the new math is, the new methods of communication, both telepathically and not. So I think we're all uh, serving ourselves very well by resting when we need to right at this point um, and, and, and taking some time in silence and uh, catching ourselves when we project uh, acknowledging when we're triggered, allowing our emotions. I mean, these very human things that we might not want people to know about. Uh, I go the other way. Maybe we should just tell everybody everything that goes yeah. on. Yeah. And I know that many people before uh, in the physical, Morgan stepped into Sology. And I say a little bit after, because there was still a couple of years I was on the road and trying to get her over here and did things like that. But they would always make comments, not just about myself, but other people that posted videos or post in the Sology group about how being so open and raw really uh, moved them. Yeah. And, and I saw it happen over these nine years. I saw people putting their soul out there, their human out there, their ass out there basically, and getting pushing past the point of embarrassment, dealing with that embarrassment, and, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, just kind of laying it on the table and saying, hey, you know what, I put my socks on just like you do. And I really think that that's what you're referring to. These, these, these people that are, have pulled this stuff in and embodied it, that's a powerful, powerful download and offering to the collective. But there's also the momentum of it swinging back. I so, see. I see. So, so it's, I you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's not, it's not real comfortable, but we know that is that uncomfortableness, that chaotic energy that produces rebirth and new creations. Okay, so a couple of things when you were saying all that, is that what you mean? Um, Todd always says the human is the hero. Is that it, what you mean? Well, it's a multiple meaning. Okay. It's a multiple meaning. I think when I first started saying that, I, I simply said that we're the ones that are here. We're the ones that showed up. I don't see Archangel Michael, no disrespect to any, uh, to any of the faces of the universe, but I don't see them down here doing the work. We're doing the work. Right. I didn't see any of them go through the trauma uh, that many people went through, childhood sexual abuse and, and just different things. I didn't see any of them walking the streets for two years and, and you know going through hell and back and all that. So for me, that was the first time I said it, but, it, but like I said, there's multiple meanings to it. And the human is a hero. The human showed up, period. And that in itself is, says everything. Now, the, the uh, evolvement of that, I think, uh, came in, to, at least into my field, uh, as I you know, started interacting with Morgan. And, and, and what I got from that was that the human is further the hero because the human has to do the work. The human cannot be left out. The human is actually may seem like the low aspect on the totem pole, but nothing happens without the human. So the human has to uh, bring the final piece of alignment, has to make the choices, has to consciously deal with the setbacks and the projections and the triggers and, and, and the shortfalls and the old programming that still come and grab you. Um, so it took on a wider expanse, uh, a more, you know, I took on a more appreciative um, you know, feeling about that uh, hashtag. Uh, but, but if I go back to just the basics, uh, and we talk about being holy and whole, I mean, we, we're here for a reason. Um, I believe that we exercise free will to come here. Uh, but I also uh, think that there were a lot more that wanted to come than ever here. <laughs> so it made, uh, made the cut. <laughs> so we, we, you know, we've spent enough time uh, pointing out what's wrong. Uh, I don't believe in fear-based programming, and I don't believe in savior-based programming. Uh, I think it's great. People want to talk about Nasara and Jasara, and people mm -hmm. want to talk about uh, Q and white hats in the government. I think that would be great. It'd be a nice narrative, but I don't trust it, and I don't, I don't 
particularly like to see people giving their power away to anything. And it doesn't really matter if it's the boogeyman under your bed or some, you know, uh, icon coming in a chariot uh, from the sky or spaceships landing or Q or white hats or, you know, I, I, I only trust myself, which is saying I trust the universe. And you said trust earlier and uh, my brothers and sisters. And really, you know, that that's actually kind of a short uh, you know, exp uh, short definition of what I trust externally, because it's really all the same thing as me. But, you know, we're, we're getting to the point now where our feet are getting put to the fire, where we're actually having uh, to walk the talk. And, and I don't think anybody here is walking on water. Uh, I think it takes a, uh, a conscious moment by moment, day by day. Um, like you said about earlier, uh, if you're listening, and you follow that guidance, any of us can be pulled off track in a heartbeat. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So, okay, it's, just, so it, it, it's just, it's just so, so funny because, and again, you go back to what you said, you know, all that fantastic stuff out there is so incredible. You know, the soulgasms and the, and the apparitions and the visitations and the dimensional experiences and seeing timelines. And the human part of it is almost like drudgery. <laughs> but, but but it's what it's what is required right. it's it's not going to be allowed to get out alive it's not going to be forgotten it's not going to be forsaken and it's going to be driven down to us each one of us individually until we hold it in the same regard we do our higher aspects perfect so for the people that are just meeting todd for the first time he has several different soulogy um pages there's uh, there's actually groups and pages and um, I, what I wanted to share is that Todd and his, Todd Medina and Morgan Lee had a love affair visible on Facebook and then they got married pretty not on Facebook but the pictures were on Facebook no it was on and Facebook <laughs> I didn't see it live. 37 minutes anyway yeah. it was storybook I mean I don't know if I was the only one just going oh that was so beautiful and and especially when you guys were separate and there was the longing and all of that um did, did you have you heard that from people of of yeah. how they they watched your relationship yeah. she lived in Australia yeah. She sold everything and came here, but it took a while. She's a grandma. I mean, yeah. it, you know, for she she took a big, yeah. big um, chance to follow her heart. Yeah, her higher self, which is probably the same thing, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, she had conversations with her higher self and said, "Why am I doing this? I don't. It doesn't make sense to me." And higher self told her to do it, and she had the wherewithal to follow that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, people have, you know, we're, we're fully aware of the impact and the responsibility that goes with uh, what we put out there. We try our best to be as raw and uh, open about it as possible. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's work. It's, it's not uh, without, uh, you know, we, things go pretty smooth for us most of the time. Uh, but there's a lot of energies out there that are affecting everybody in a lot of kind of quirky, crazy, wild ways. And individuals go through it. What makes you think a couple wouldn't go through it? Right. Um, but it's uh, it's a new paradigm. We understand it, that we have a role um, in that we chose uh, to come down here and connect. We literally had a, uh, a dimensional sharing uh, three years ago where uh, you know, we're in a, in a, I don't know what you'd call it, you know, future life or past life or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but, uh, that we, we made a promise to find each other. Uh, we understand that, that part of our, uh, missions within our missions is to uh, anchor divine union to the planet, uh, sacred sexuality, uh, and to expand the templates of the pre-existing, uh, unions, um, and, uh, you know, it's serious business, but all these new templates are. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I just want to point out to everybody, I mean, it, 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 it's like everything else. It follows suit with our own individual journeys. 
It takes no BS, no excuses, no lies, no blaming other people. Yes, you're going to have some mistakes. Yes, there's some advantages to having a partner with you. Uh, and there's also disadvantages. Anyone yeah. that's in a union during these times uh, will tell you, uh, and we have them on the show. And it's funny when I ask them these questions because I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but at the end of the day, um, it's, it's, it's sweet. It really is. Oh, it's sweet. I'm sure. Yeah. It's, it's nice. It's different than anything I ever heard about, read about, experienced, uh, know about. Uh, and we're basically both learning as we go and in a, in a sense, making it up as we go, because we're applying our own experience as a human uh, onto that Akashic uh, code and frequency that was pre-existing before we started these incarnations. And like every other template and every other blueprint that's being expanded and rebuilt, um, it's it's important. And uh, yeah, and so it's it's nice. It's it, it's nice. It really is. It's been it's been a lot of work, and Wonderful. it's uh, you know it seems to be like following the parallel where there's a there's a, a universal re reciprocation occurring, man, uh, um, um, creative man manifestation is occurring more rapidly now so it's a good idea to be more conscious with what we're creating because if we're not paying attention we can instantly be hit with a two by four right in the head um you know because this is a this is big time this is the big time now yep well one of the times i think i had you guys on my show you were talking about sacred union and i'm wondering how do you see sacred union working with this new idea of world unity do you see that it's a component absolutely okay if you think about um if you just think about the math you know it, it, you know it's it's inconceivable that a person who has found let's say sacred union within themselves who is even if they're walking on water already you know, which last time I checked, nobody is, it's inconceivable that they could go out and mirror and create and mirror uh, that in an external of 100 people. Uh, it only makes sense that it first starts with another person. Now, does that mean it's a traditional romantic relationship? Not necessarily. It could be a soul that is a pet. It could be a soul that's an animal or, or a place. It could be a lot of things. But I think because it's such a dense realm, and I mean dense not in a bad way, but I mean we're very physical, right. it just kind of makes sense that it would be with another person most likely. Uh, yes, I do think that it is a base component in our transition that we call ascension, unity consciousness. I think it's a, uh, it's a small, powerful mirror uh, of what will occur. Uh, and it won't even really come close in terms of that because there's an exponential, um, there's an experiential, uh, exponential uh, kind of uh, explosion on this side of the ascension. What I mean by that is, you know, on the old side, one plus one equals two. On this side, one plus one equals three. Because we're in the age of the Trinity, we're creating the third energy that we're starting to become conscious creators with. And so you can imagine, you know, I, I don't think in the sacred text it says where two or more gather for, you know, for, you know, someone just came up with that. There's right. power in that. The math changes, you know, Tesla talks about the 369. I mean, there's something happens. There's something happens. We've seen a lot of evidence of it in our own life, and we've also noticed it in other people's as well. Okay. So, okay. So talking about that time period when we were talking before about sacred union, hmm. you, you were talking about, and, and you brought up before about ETs mm -hmm. and, um, and basically are, are you, are you feeling that the multidimensional beings that around all of us are supporting you and Morgan or as part of this divine union yeah. anchoring that frequency or do you feel that every because I I'm seeing teams around everybody now yeah well I think uh, there's no doubt I mean we can you know it's again here we go with how do you talk about stuff that can't be talked about in, <laughs> in, in words um uh, I think in essence, everybody's had teams 
uh, these teams are aspects or extensions of ourselves that are, you know, however that all works. Um, for instance, I think there's, you know, a whole different um, atmosphere around the subject of demons or dark energy or you know we're starting to understand that if i've got dark energy coming into my field that there's something in me that is responsible for that so right. having yeah. said that i think that the higher sensitivities are coming into play uh more and more people are starting to pick up clairs and being able to see things hear things know things and such uh but i definitely absolutely believe uh, and this is someone who had uh, plenty of experiences with what we might call dark energies. Um, but I think that uh, there's plenty of uh, that whatever, whatever is coming into alignment with us individually in our relationships on the earth, regardless of what it looks like, uh, the universal is coming into further alignment as well through uh, our own experience. And so, yeah, I think everything's move in that direction. I think there is an element of a given that this ascension is going down, so to speak. I don't <laughs> think there's any, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a collective deal. Uh -huh. uh, but the individual can, uh, can and will influence consciously and not uh, how smooth or rough that ride is and what else they choose to create. So well, well, the reason I ask this is that I feel like there is assistance um, from some of the other ET groups that are here. It, maybe they're supporting hybrids. Mm. I, I don't know exactly what, but I do feel that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of ships that people are photographing them every day. There's, uh, every day there's their ship. Uh, videos and photographs on Facebook and on YouTube. So I, I do think that we're the best show in town. We're <laughs> a part of the quadrant. So I just wondered yeah. if that was part of your your way of looking at your role. Because when you said that you feel like you're holding space for other yeah. um, other people, I mean, a lot of people talk about being grid workers for mm -hmm. physical for mother earth the grid the physical grid and then the, there's some people holding a grid that's the next level up that's not the 3d grid the next four to six four to six yeah. i think i don't know i you know uh, i don't think anybody really has a good beat on it uh if you take for example uh the um idea that there are ships okay uh i think at some level um there is a line between the sand between what we might call physical and non-physical exactly um are those ships in the physical or are they in the non-physical because if they're in the physical then they're no different than the bear in the woods and the bug right. on the on the sidewalk um i i think for me you know, the way I understand the universe and, and just life force energy in my own right is that you're not going to get, no, nothing's going to come in here and save you because right. there's nothing to be saved. Right. Uh, the point is to come and expand individually and to serve the collective in your individual efforts to expand because you directly and proportionately enhance the collective's own expansion. Uh, I think, uh, I would be surprised, and this is just my opinion, I would be surprised if spaceships land. Uh, if spaceships land and we're going to have this big disclosure and a bunch of benevolent ETs are going to come and say, okay, we're going to take you to the new, to the, to the new earth, and I'd be more skeptical than I would be believing it. Uh, I just would, you know, to thine own self be true. And uh, I contain all things in the universal and the multiversal within myself. Uh, I don't have all the answers, uh, but what I do have is uh, the ability to feel uh, the development and enhancement of trust of faith uh, in my heart. And, uh, and I'm, I would rather, you know, burn at the stake. Uh, and I would then, then go and buy into, uh, you know, we're going to take you to a new earth and we're going to do this and do that. 
uh, I just wouldn't buy it because it's the, that's the same narrative that we've had yep. for the last five or 6,000 years. Still so, victim, savior, it's the same. Well, problem. I mean, and I guess the way I look at it too, and I'd love to, to have a storybook, a storybook uh, fairy tale fantasy, and that's really what we are anyway. But uh, the way I look at it is, you know, uh, anything that takes focus off of my own self-introspection, self-development, self-reliance, self-responsibility, self-love, and so on. Anything that takes my focus off of that is a distraction. Unless it's something engaged with me that is a mirror of me in this physicality, take Morgan as example, uh, that's what I think we actually came to do. I think what we actually came to do was be the gods and goddess in the flesh and actually utilize our skills and abilities in the physical matter, in the flesh, uh, and do some of the things we do in dimension and in dream state, uh, but actually do it in the physical. We're talking alchemy, magic, and so on. Yahoo. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Todd. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, well, I have a hundred more questions, but we're out of time. That's no problem. <laughs> so, no problem. Well, well, I just want everyone to know that um, Todd has been working on a project called Soulogy, and it's only a matter of time um, before that website is up. And um, certainly in the meantime, you should be looking at Facebook. I think you'll be amazed at the talent and the just brilliant information that he shares. And as you can see, he's a, a easy, easy going interviewer. Actually, he's pretty comfortable this time. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes sometimes you guys haven't been that comfortable but um <laughs> but morgan his wife has just launched a new site where she's doing conscious reprogramming as a prerequisite necessary to divine unity within and her website is called z dash row point so z point zero point z yeah, oh it's z without z two yeah. r's yeah, Z hyphen row, R O W point. Dot com. Um, and it's in the chat. Yeah. So, and she's a very magical being. He alluded yeah. to all the shifts that he's had since they've been married. And you, it's, it's, uh, you can hear it in your voice and mm -hmm. you know how different you are. It's really wonderful. <laughs> it's great. Well, thank you so much. And it's, if I can help in any way, I, I definitely love you guys and love what you're thank doing. Thank you so much. And uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you on behalf of the Co-Creators Convergence. And, uh, you know, this is just a warm-up act because we only had about 200 uh, partners to put on World Unity Week. So when we do this in September, uh, the weekend of peace, September 21st, that weekend, um, we're, we want to have about 2,000 partners because wow. we want to get this out. So uh, wow. you're invited. So get Get to get your site together. Yeah. Thank you for joining our pre-party. <laughs> yeah, thank right you, on. Todd, and love to Morgan. Thank You're you very so welcome. much. Thank you very much. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you.